Good day, ladies and gentlemen. We are going to be looking at some factoring exercises. These 10 factoring exercises are the ones we're going to do, so I want you to take a good look at them, see if those are the types of problems you'd like to have the brush up on. The purpose of this is going to be having a review prior to going doing an SAT or maybe you have an Algebra 2 exam that's going to help you for just kind of brushing up. And what is the purpose of factoring? Well, the purpose of factoring usually is to is to find the factors to be able to graph if this was a function f of x equals x squared minus 2x minus 99 or say that this we have an equation where this quadratic trinomial is equal to zero how do we solve for this that would be a context for which we could use factoring so let's go ahead about the factoring of this so this first one example we have is a quadratic trinomial and a quadratic trinomial usually we're going to try to factor it into two linear binomials and for ones where we just have a single x squared usually I find that writing it out with the parentheses is probably the easiest way to go and so the factors of x squared are going to be x and x and next we're going to be looking for a factors that when multiplied together equal 90, negative 99, yet when added together equal negative 2. And so just factoring 99, we can try different things out. So 99 is going to be equal to, we can write, rewrite this as the product of 3 and 33. That would be one way to do this. We would have uh, another way to do this is 99 is equal to 9 times 11. Well, 9 times 11 is really going to be helpful to us because these values, 9 and 11, are two units apart. And so if we take, for instance, negative 11 times 9, we're going to get negative 99. So these numbers, negative 11 and 9, are going to be the ones we're looking for. So minus x minus 11, x plus 9. And we can see if we multiply these back together, we're going to get our original quadratic trinomial. Okay, uh, number two, another quadratic trinomial, but this time we have a leading coefficient of six, and so this complicates things. So what we're gonna try to do first <coughs> is see if we can factor anything out of these three terms. And the thing that really grabs my attention from the beginning is realizing that each of these three coefficients, leading coefficients here in front of each term are six, 40, and 24. Each of those is an even numbered. So we can take uh, two out of each of these terms and, and have something easier to work with. So two times what equals six x squared? Well, that's gonna be three x squared. And two times what equals 40 x? That's gonna be 20 x. And finally, two times what equals 24? That's gonna be two times 12. And so now we're gonna take this second piece here, three x squared plus 20 x, plus 12, and being a more complex nature, we're going to use something that's called either the X method or the bottoms up method. So in this quadratic trinomial, we have A is equal to 3, B is equal to 20, and C is equal to 12. So on the top of our X, we're going to put the product of A and C, and A is 3, C is 12, so that's going to be 36. And then the bottom, we're going to put b. b is 20. So now we're looking for two numbers, which when added together are 20, yet when multiplied together equal 36. And you can try different things. You can try 6 times 6. And, but when you add together 6 plus 6, you're going to get 12. So that's not what we're looking for. But how about 2 times 18? Well, 2 plus 18 are going to be 20. So that's going to work out for us. So we put on either side of the x, we put a 2 and an 18. And then we divide these two numbers by a, and a is 3. And so we, I'm going to put down divide by a. And so that's, that's what we do here, here, and also here. 
Okay, next we're going to simplify as much as we can. And so on the right we have 18 over 3, which is going to be 6. And so I'm going to write over here x plus 2 thirds and then quantity x plus 6. And then we use bottoms up to take this 3 and move it up here with this x. So we're going to say 3x plus 2 and we have times quantity x plus 6. So this is the full factoring here of 3x squared plus 20x plus 12. So our answer for this, our final factored answer is going to be 2 times these factors, linear binomials, the factors 3x plus 2 times quantity x plus 6. And so that's going to be worked out our complete factoring. Next, 3. We have x squared minus 2x plus 15. And so again, we have a quadratic trinomial with just 1x squared. So we're going to try x and x. The factors of, of, x, and, of x squared are going to be x and x. And then we're going to have a positive 15, but a negative middle term. So we're going to have to have a negative times a negative. Well, if we try like negative 3 and negative 5, which is, or negative 15 and negative 1, they're not going to add up to negative 2. In fact, there's nowhere anywhere close. And so just graphing this, which I did earlier, you, you go here and put this in the calculator, and you see that this, the graph of this, of the function for this expression does not touch or cross the x-axis, meaning that it's not factorable. So this is an example where we have a quadratic trinomial that is not factorable. Occasionally we'll run into that. Next, 4, we have 5x squared plus 7x plus 2. Again, we're going to use this x method, or bottoms up method. On the top we put a, c, and a being 5, c being 2, we have 10. On the bottom we have 7. And two numbers that add to 7 multiply to 10. How about 5 and 2? And then we divide by a, a being 5. And we simplify where we can. 5 over 5 is 1. So what we have here is x, 20x plus 1. Then we have x plus 2 fifths. And on this x plus 2 fifths is where we're going to use the bottoms up. And so our answer is going to be, we take this 5 and bring it up with that x. So our answer is going to be quantity x plus 1 times quantity 5x plus 2. And so that will be our complete factoring of this particular quadratic trinomial. Next we have x squared minus 12x plus 36. Again, a quadratic trinomial with the leading coefficient of 1. So the factors of x squared are going to be x and x. And then we have a negative middle term, negative 12x, and positive value of c. So we're going to have to have a negative times a negative. So what two numbers added together are going to be negative 12, yet when multiplied together are 36. So that's going to be minus 6 times negative 6. And so uh, we can further simplify this by writing this as a binomial squared. So that's going to be 20x minus 6 squared. So that's going to be our fully factored problem 5. Next, we have 4x squared plus 5x minus 6. Okay, again, I don't see anything we can factor out of here. So we just go ahead and make the x here. And then we put AC on top, which is negative 24. And the bottom we put 5. So we look for two numbers, which when multiplied together are negative 24, yet when added together are 5. And so factors of, of 24 could be like 2 and 12, uh, 4, 6, 8 times 3. And this 8 and 3, that's the intriguing one because what we can have is that if we have 8 times negative 3, 
that's going to be equal to negative 24. So that's going to be the one that works out for us. So let's just go ahead and put the 8 times negative 3. And our value of a is 4. So we divide each of these numbers by 4 and simplify where we can. Well, 8 over 4 is 2. So we're going to have here is we have x plus 2. We're going to have quantity x minus 3 fourths. And on this x minus 3 fourths, we bottoms up that 4. And we're going to get as our completely factored quadratic trinomial quantity x plus 2 times quantity 4x minus 3. And that's going to be our completely factored problem number 6. Next, problem 7. We have 6x cubed plus 18x squared. Now in this we don't have a quadratic trinomial, but we have a binomial. It's a cubic binomial. So we look for the greatest common factor in these two terms. And for that, I say that they're going to be 6x squared. And then what times 6x squared equals x cubed? Well, that's going to be x. What times 6x squared equals 18x squared? That's going to be plus 3. And in this instance, we don't have any other place to go to, to factor more deeply unless we wanted to write 6 times x times x times 20x plus 3. So we're going to call this expression here a fully factored replication. And the next we have 169x squared minus 225y squared. And this is going to, we're going to use something here called the difference of squares. And the difference of squares is this. That if we have two numbers that are perfect squares, so we have x, I'm going to use a, if we have a squared minus b squared, the factors of this quadratic binomial are going to be quantity a plus b times quantity a minus c minus b. So what you're doing is you're taking the square root of both of these terms and putting them in this, uh, we call this the difference of squares factored form. And so using the same principle here for this quantity 169x squared, if we take the square root of 169x squared, we're going to get what? We're going to get 13x. And that's going to be plus. And then over here on the right side, we're going to have 13x minus. Now we're going to take a 225y squared. What is going to be the square root of that? Well, 15 times 15 is 225, so we're going to have plus 15, and what's the square root of y squared? y. And then over here we have minus 15y. So that's going to be our answer to number 8. Next, number 9, we have 4x minus 28. So we look for a greatest common factor. Hope we can see that 4 is a common factor between both of these terms. So 4 times what equals 4x? Well, that's going to be x. And 4 times what equals negative 28? Well, that's going to be 7. So this is as far as we can go. That's our fully factored version of, of number 9. And the last exercise we have here is 10, 4x squared, minus 9. I hope you can see that this is a difference of squares application. The square root of 4x squared is going to be 2x. So we put 2x in each place. And we're going to have plus or minus, plus and minus, the square root of 9, which is 3. So there we have it. That's all those exercises. I hope they've been helpful to you in some way. Appreciate you coming by. Good luck, and thanks for viewing.